This is the Sunday video for the right and proper ladies. This is my gift from Big Bang Theory RL to the right proper ladies. They don't have any videos for Saturday and Sunday, so I'm donating uh, two videos a week to their uh, YouTube channel. Their topic was, and I guess still is, dreams. And yesterday I was describing some of the physiology of dreams. Uh, and then um, I kind of took too long. It went to, I'm going to try to keep today's a little shorter than I did yesterday. Aiming for about the five minute mark. Anyway, uh, the, one of the bizarre things is uh, when uh, I, I noticed that uh, in terms of my dreams that uh, the more sleep deprived I am, the more while I'm awake, the dreams that I had, not even the night before, but just in general, start seeping into my conscious state of mind. So while you're awake, you're conscious. When you're uh, asleep, is primarily the subconscious that's working, uh, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, people who have uh, sleep disorders where they sleepwalk and so on and so forth. Uh, there is uh, mechanisms where the the two worlds kind of mix. And the reverse kind, the reverse happens when you're sleep sleep deprived, and you're awake. What hap what does happen is that dreams start coming into, start seeping into uh, reality. And this is where you get monsters under the bed. You know, you know. It depends. You know, if, if anyone has sort of experienced these late night study sessions, where they've gone, it's like like four o'clock in the morning. Everyone's asleep in the house, and they start hearing things. Well, <laughs> that's where th this is. This is after the giggle. This is after the giggle fits. See, when you when you get into this sort of the sleep deprived mode, you go through a period where you're a little tired. Right, your 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 end of the day uh, adrenaline drops off. But after that, if you can push yourself to stay awake, then what happens is you get a second adrenaline rush, what they call a second wind. And sort of at the peak of that, that's when the giggle, the giggle fits start. Things, things that shouldn't be funny start becoming funny. Uh, after the giggle fits, though, that's when <laughs> I guess sort of a stage of paranoia sets in, and you start being concerned about different noises and different things in the house. And well, what I found is that as you sort of get into that sort of stage where it, you get into sort of that, that really, really late stage there, that's when uh, some of the uh, dreams that I had and that I remember start coming back into, um, into my awake state, into my conscious state. And then, I'm, I'm kind of used, to, sort of used to it because the, the way I end up working is that uh, most of my days are 12 hours a day of reading and, reading and studying. So mo anyone who, who's up there who describes themselves as a nerd fighter uh, will sort of understand the number, the amount of hours you spend reading. That this does affect your dreams. It does affect, you know, it affects your wake state. It even affects how you speak to people. A lot of my speech problems. Uh, and my stumbliness has to do with the fact that uh, I spend a majority of my day inside my mind. I am reading or writing. So when you speaking to somebody, when you're speaking to somebody, the tendency is to speak in your mind and not directly to the person using your mouth. You have to sort of consciously say, "Wait a minute, I'm not in the book anymore. I'm not writing anymore. I need to speak to the person." Uh, directly that's in front of me. I need to, you know, the, the words have to come out of the mouth. They can't simply stay in the mind. But uh, if you're sleep deprived because you've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of writing, depends if you're if you're just a reader. Because I know some people are just readers and don't do any writing. Some people are, are writers but don't do a lot of reading. Some people do both. Some people are both readers and writers do a lot all at once. Uh, 
but if you've done a lot of that and you've, you've sort of, you know, for those of you who are at home, have sort of, after your parents have gone to bed, just flip that little light on and say reading at night when you're not supposed to be sleeping, when you're not supposed to be reading but you're supposed to be sleeping, uh, then you kind of understand what I'm talking about, how, that, that it is sometimes difficult to talk to people. Uh, I'm, this has sort of been one of, my, I said, my, one of my issues, and if you want to do videos and documentaries, uh, then you better learn how to speak. And so, the, the one of the purposes behind Big Bang Theory RL is to sort of get over my um, geekiness of speech and start saying hello to people, uh, being more animated, not being so, you know monotones that, that as you listen to my voice you start falling asleep. That's sort of not the, uh, not good for, for documentaries. You want to sort of bring out emphasis. You want to, you know, be animated. You want to be um, saying the right words at the right time. It's sort of, uh, it, it's, it's putting together the essay that you would normally write into a verbal form. And this is sort of my approach that uh, instead of writing papers from now on uh, for my research, I'm going to start producing videos and, and doing documentaries. That's sort of where I'm going to be going with all this. And Big Bang Theory L provides a lot is going to provide a lot of the background stuff. But it can't just always be you know um, technically and detail oriented. It has to be more personable that you can't just simply it's not a matter of simply rambling off uh, a sentence or you know or, or a paragraph it, it, everything has to have in it uh, it's sort of punctuation it, 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 and punctuation it, it, properly if you read punctuation right it, it is the breathing it's the spaces in the words it's, it's the pauses but while you can read this stuff, you, you can read it as like that. If you're reading, you know, Jane Eyre, if you're reading uh, uh, something like from Jane Austen, or you're reading from you know, any of the Bronte sisters, or any of the, you know, the, the really good writers, you can sort of, as you're reading, hear the conversation that's going on, and you hear it in your mind. Well, this is a, sort of the same thing. Is that, that at some point in time. You, you're when you're doing the uh, video uh, vlog, the the video log and the, the blogging, or I should say the uh, video logs. Uh, what's what's it called? No, vlogging, right? And rather than blogging, it's vlogging. That if you can ex speak as well as you write, or as well as that you've read, then that's sort of the ultimate goal. Uh, but it does, it, it, it does affect, affect your dreams. Uh, you can always sort of, in your dreams and in your daydreams, do things a lot better than you can do in real life. Well, dreams are sort of, the, in many ways, for, for myself anyways, I don't know if it is for all, uh, other, other geeks, dreams are, are where you can excel, you can do things that normally you wouldn't be able to do in real life. Um, it's just a, a different, you know, a different, a different. For me, it's a different environment where the nerdiness and the geekiness uh, don't always pop out. There's no always present. There are different alternatives, and sometimes I can go back and do things again. Like because uh, if you have a, a repeating or a recurring dream where you're always a child. Uh, if you're of the mind that you're aware that you're dreaming inside your dream, you can actually go back and improve the situation in your dream. You can actually change. If you, you have the presence of mind in your dream that you're dreaming, then you can plan while you're awake to go when you're going back to sleep how to change that dream. And well, you can't change everything about the dream. You can't influence uh, how you behave in the dream. And as that that change in your behavior changes so does the dream and so does the result of the dream. Now, of course, you know, the nightmare, my nightmares now are not, aren't, aren't always necessarily when monsters are chasing you, but sort of realizing, you know, that I am a nerd, that I, you know, that, you know, it's sort of, it's, I guess this is from a, from a, well, I think girls maybe feel this way. You know, uh, 
wondering why you're not like that hot girl or why I'm not like that hot guy you know there's a guy out there you know um, he's dressed properly or he's got muscles and he's got you know it all, all this is sort of what's happened to me is that you know, you've got when I've been and I've had friends who were not nerds uh, and then I'm out with them and they go out to clubs and stuff like that uh, they get all the attention from the girls and it's only after about five ten minutes that they turn around oh and there you are you know once you've had that happen to a couple happen happen to you a couple times you begin to realize that hey wait a minute you know I'm not the suave hunky guy that I thought I was so that you know that whole you know the whole thing of, of the geeks thinking you're oh I'm so hot and stuff like that that really doesn't occur uh, because it, at a certain point you begin to realize when everyone is sort of sort of passing you by uh, and that you aren't this hot guy you aren't this hot girl uh, you're not this sort of you know and I think you know for geeks that if your dreams are changed in such a way that they're good for the geek side of things, that part of the nightmare would be is if your geekiness, this sort of uh, reality in life, leaks into your dream and sort of chases <laughs> chases you uh, as you're dreaming, you're sort of you're being chased by your own geekiness. Uh, but that's not, you know, it, it, the dreams for me, anyways, are highly um, motivated by my fears and anxieties and my feelings. So as I deal with my emotional side, then I can deal with my dreams and change the dreams. And what I mean with deal with because if you you really do have in some cases if if your dreams are about the nightmares your scary dreams are fears deal with your fears if you don't deal with your fears and they'll keep coming back in dreams over and over and over again and at some point in time this is what produces insomnia this is what produces depression it, it it sort of builds on itself so you do have to deal with the fears in your dreams that present themselves as nightmares. Uh, but you don't have to, you don't have to sort of go in and sort of figure out this you know this sort of mystical uh, symbolism. It's more that when you have a nightmare, when you're having a bad dream, there's some form of fear there. If you can identify the feeling that you're having and match it with something that's going on in real life, then you understand that you have to sort of deal with you know you have to sort of deal with it. Get say say okay, this is the way I'm feeling. And some of the time, it's it's just saying, yeah, I'm 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 feeling depressed right now, and just sort of leave it at that. Recognize how you're feeling, and once you do that, then you can sort of move out of it and move on because it's, ah, ah, there it is, right there. I I am who I am. This is how I'm feeling right now. And at some point in time later on, I'll feel happier. So. And that's kind of, you know, the way things should be or could be. So, happy dreaming people. If you're, again, if you're, not, if you're having nightmares and having bad dreams, uh, for, for the girls who are, have your uh, dream journals, write them down. I have my dream journal uh, next to my bed. And I have a little light that, you know, wanted to wake up. I, and, and I've had a dream. I write down in my journal what's occurred. Um, and then, but the point thing you got to remember to write down is how you're feeling during the dream, whether it's a nightmare or something good. And that will be sort of your key to really sort of dealing with the nightmares or the issues that you're having in your life. Alrighty, uh, once again, uh, to uh, write in proper ladies, this is my gift to you. And I'd like to say hello to Helicopter.